Hyper the Temple Designers. Platform is a show of 2022, and I'm going to start searching for a template and use a reference by Love Lorendo, beautiful platform show. So you can find some options here in the platform section, for example, this one. Or you can go to wedge section as well and find a few options. I'm going to have to modify and I will take this template and split screen with the reference that I have. So here's the velvet Lothlorendil sandal um, with a platform. And I'm going to modify this template in order to get the same shape. And I'll probably leave two views, the top view and the side view. I'm going to start with outlining the template and using a pencil of a small size and a black color. But I will have to adjust the shape of the template in order to get the same silhouette. So for the heel, I'm going to take a straight line and I have here the, si the side view in a different color. And I'm going to build this exact shame as close as I can to the reference. It's time to add some of these top stripes. I'm going to add one more layer because when I'm going to be sketching them, if I do any mistakes, I don't want to disrupt my previous drawing. So I count the amount of these stripes. There's going to be eight of them. So I will use the template, um, this whole part on top as my reference and divide it into eight approximately equal parts with some distances between them and then follow this overall shape that I have on my template to draw the eight separate stripes. All right, now I can fix the drawing under the stripes and I'm on the first layer, which is underneath and I can delete the drawing, the part of the drawing that is not going to be visible. And I'm going to then switch to the stripes level and delete uh, layer, sorry, and delete the parts of the drawing as well that are excessive there. So I'm just going to clear it, clean it and make it pretty because I'm planning to keep it visible. I'm not planning to keep it as a draft and like switch it off later, but to be like the um, the outline of my drawing. Here I pick a new layer because these views are pretty close together. So I want to have some freedom of movement if I need to erase something. And I'm starting to build the view on top based on this reference picture that I have on the side. 
I have pictures and different views so that I can really have a good idea how it looks like from both sides. All right, so the drawing looks nearly done, except there are some extra lines that I don't need over here. So I'm going to switch to this layer and get rid of them. Right now I can definitely merge all of these layers into one. So this is going to be my drawing layer. And now I'm adding one more layer and dragging it under the drawing because I want the drawing to always stay visible and start coloring. I'm going to um, begin with this leather part and pick the color right from the reference using a color pick tool. And I took the marker to start filling in this area. I want to just take maybe only two shades because you can see this is a matte um, leather. It doesn't have much differences between the light and dark. So if the entire surface is lit, you, you won't have that much of the differences. So one or two colors will do. This looks finished and I will add one more layer to start coloring the orange part. As you can see, I didn't bother to erase um, those extra parts because they're going to be covered anyways. That's why I'm placing the new layer on top of the previous one. So I'm going to color pick the first color and start filling in the entire area. Take a look at the tool that I am using. It's this flat marker. I don't know. It's actually, I guess it's a marker. It has this beautiful bleeding edge. And usually I like to use it for things like fur or maybe knitwear. This is another great example where this tool just does half of the job for you because the edge that it creates already um, works for velvet. You have, you start to have feeling of something like this plushy surface, something soft, which um, it's really great to take advantage of it without having to draw that. Here I covered nearly the entire area with my first color 
and I'm going to add one more layer and start adding darker color. So I'm going to color pick it straight from here. Another interesting thing to keep in mind for the velvet is that colors that you will see are not going to be just values of the same color. For, e for example, here you can see that the lead part is much more yellow and the shadow part is much more orange. So if you just take a yellow part and move the toggle towards the dark, you'll just see a dull color, somewhat greenish. But if you pick an orange color, you'll have that really glowing and beautiful effect. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually using the standard palette right now because it's going to be faster for me to quickly manipulate um, with different shades of orange. So here's my second step and I'm adding the middle value somewhat, but it's interesting to pay attention to the transition between the light and shadow. You can see there's somewhat a patchy kind of uh, pattern that you can see and the transitions are somewhat um, soft at some parts and really harsh at another parts. So the best way to replicate the velvet is to keep these uh, points in mind. Picking the next shade, even darker one, I'm going to go for this deep burnt orange. Might add it to my custom palette as well. And start adding some uh, shadow parts. So here it is, and I feel that maybe it's a little bit, uh, it looks a little bit harsh. So I'm going to try and find a transition color and soften some of these transitions. I think I'm going to add one more layer and start building more shadows because I can see quite darker values still there. And make it even more beautiful. This darkest color I'm going to place in the creases and places where the material is folded or two parts touching each other basically where there is the deepest shadow and hopefully it's going to add more realism to the illustration. I'm going to check if there's any darker color that is present on the reference that I don't have yet. So I'll try to find the darkest spot out there and see if there's anywhere I want to add it. I think it's pretty close to what I already have. And I took a flat thin marker, the one with a straight edge, just to intensify some of these lines. And it's going to be more of a precision lines instead of the um, soft ones that I've used before.
And when I take a closer look, I feel like I have killed some of these really light, beautiful, glowing parts. So maybe I will just try and bring them back. And I'm going to swatch this color from the reference by using this color dropper. Or I actually already have it in my palette and maybe bring back some of these really glowing highlights. I still have to work on this little metal detail and I'll pick a, a pen to fill it in. Just really um, easy with one or two colors. There's also a stitched part that I can add using the type of line with a dashed line and by switching the size of line you can actually alter the size of the stitching. As a finishing touch I want to add some of these dark colors as well on the heel and to like introduce the full range of values to that area as well to add a little bit of contrast. I think it looks better this way. I'm just going to clear the parts that are outside of the drawing and take a look at the final illustration. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Um, thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel.